Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reading some of your comments and uh, I want to give a big thanks to all of you out there who have subscribed to my channel. Uh, as you might have noticed, I recently passed 300 subscribers, uh, which is another um, fantastic milestone. And uh, I just want to uh, pay it back to all of you who've made this possible, all the success of my channel. I really appreciate it. So, uh, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to read some of your comments. And the link to each of the channels that I mentioned will be in the description. So if you want to go and check out their channels, you know, just go ahead and click on uh, the various links. And I'm sure they'd appreciate it. And if you like what you see there, uh, you know, go ahead and subscribe to them. So let's get into the first comment. So this first comment is about the uh, the review that I did of the Nabu N1 Starfighter from episode one. And it comes from Cajun Toy Review. And um, he says, a great fun video, definitely excited to see updated in the new vehicle. Yeah, I, I don't know if Hasbro is intending to do that. I really hope they do. I think the hot rotted version of this uh, N1 Starfighter that appears in the Book of Boba Fett um, really looks amazing. Uh, but the track record for Hasbro on vehicles has been kind of lackluster um, recently. So I'm not going to you know, hold my breath in terms of whether or not we actually see it. And uh, if we do see it, it may be incredibly overpriced or very hard to find. So again, um, I, I'm not too optimistic about that, but I do hope that Hasbro uh, sees the potential in releasing this as a general release vehicle. I'm sure they would sell tons of them, um, but you know, um, who knows if it's going to happen. But I appreciate your comment and, uh, you know, keep those comments coming. I've noticed, uh, you know, you've been commenting a lot on a lot of my videos. I've checked out your channel. Your content is fantastic. So keep it going. And thanks again. So this next comment is about uh, my video where I compare the uh, Mego Batman to the one made by Figures Toy Company. And uh, uh, the comment was made by MIB Master Toy Museum. And he says, your channel is definitely becoming one of my favorites. This was a great comparison video between FTC and Mego Batman figures. Something about the original head sculpt of FTC's Batman just seems so much cooler. And uh, I do like the Figures Toy Company version. Um, it's very nostalgic. Uh, definitely has a throwback look to the original Mego Batman. Uh, but in terms of the head sculpt, I, I'm more inclined to sort of favor the new version, uh, mainly because I like the sculpting a little bit better. He definitely looks more dramatic and more serious a character than, than the original one, which is a little more cartoony. But to each their own, uh, I think uh, they each have their merits, and I'm very excited to have both of them in my collection. And uh, I'm very honored that you said uh, that my channel is becoming one of, one of your favorites. Um, I've been following MIB for a very long time. Your channel's awesome. Uh, you cover tons and tons of stuff, including G.I. Joe and Mego and all kinds of uh, fantastic toys. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm truly honored that, uh, you know, you've um, been watching my channel and been uh, enjoying the videos. So thank you very much. All right, so this next comment comes from the uh, Skeletor Flex Dream uh, video that I made uh, where I reviewed that particular action figure. It's like a bendy figure. And uh, the Gaming Toy Boy uh, commented that, Love Skeletor. I recently bought the Battle Armor Loyal Subject Skeletor. Not normally my, my sort of thing, but Skeletor seems to look great no matter what medium or style. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome. And uh, I, I definitely agree that Skeletor uh, has a lot of uh, flexibility in terms of different interpretations of the character, probably more so than He-Man, uh, just because Skeletor is very kind of extreme looking. And I think that actually translated well into the extreme Bendy figure. Uh, it actually looks very cool, just the way that it came out. Uh, whereas the, the He-Man figure, uh, I've looked at it and I can't even bring myself to buy it just because it, it kind of looks pretty ridiculous. So, uh, but I really appreciate your commenting and uh, keep those comments coming. Thank you so much. Okay, so this next comment uh, is about my review of the Mission Fleet Razor Crest uh, action figure vehicle. And uh, DJ Squibby commented that I picked up this ship and Mando's speeder bike. The way these are marketed with the figures reminds me of the Battlestar Galactica vehicles from the 1970s that included a small figure. Yeah, that's a good observation. Um, uh, and that was a frustrating thing back in the 70s that you couldn't get a, a vehicle that was scaled with the actual action figures. The vehicles that they produced were very small. And uh, I have noticed that there is a, a customizer out there who's actually making three and three quarter versions of those vehicles, though. Um, he does it via a 3D printer and so forth. So those are available to purchase now. Um, so that problem has sort of been corrected in recent years. Um, so he produced uh, not only the uh, Colonial Viper, but also the, the Cylon uh, fighter. And um, so and the vehicles are high quality and 3D printed. 
printed and they look amazing. So, um, so for those of you who are interested, uh, yeah, those things are out there and you can actually get a three and three quarter inch Battlestar Galactica vehicle. Uh, but in terms of the Razor Crest, yeah, I'm frustrated that they produced, they put a lot of effort into producing this version of the Razor Crest, uh, when they easily could have scaled back certain aspects of it and made it in scale with the three and three quarter inch size action figures. So why they didn't do that, I'm not sure. Um, maybe they're just uh, misguided, or or they you know they were trying to push the Haslab Razor Crest, which you know it's it's very limited in terms of how many people can actually buy that. It's very expensive, hundreds of dollars. So and I just feel like again it was a missed opportunity. They they really could have done a three and three quarter inch vehicle, sold it at retail stores, uh, and probably produced it for maybe only a little bit more than it cost to produce this vehicle. So. Um, it's one of those things where you're sort of scratching your head as, as to why those decisions were made. But I really appreciate uh, the fact that you commented on this video and, you know, keep those comments coming. Thanks again. So this next comment comes uh, for my video about the Space Collider reproduction Micronauts toys made by Palisades Toys. And uh, the comment was made by The Figure Trap. And he said, that artwork on the card looks really good. When those wings popped up, the kid in me got excited. Awesome review, man. Yeah, I think uh, there are certain aspects about these older toys uh, in terms of, you know, the sort of simple kind of gimmicks that were included with them, but also that sort of, you know, um, retro styling. I think that's part of the reason why Palisades decided to do these reproductions. They knew the audience was out there, obviously, to have reproductions of these toys. And obviously there were a bunch of fans who really were supp very supportive of this. And the fact that they commissioned a talented illustrator like Dave Dorman to do these fantastic, you know, paintings of the various characters was really awesome. And I'm very pleased to have them in my collection. They do have some quality control issues, but, you know, if you don't handle them too much, um, they do make uh, excellent display pieces. Once again, uh, thank you for checking out the video and commenting. And um, I'm loving your channel. I, I love all the, the toy hunt videos that you do on your channel. It's not something that I do a ton of on this channel, but... I really enjoy, you know, how you're getting out there to various stores and seeing uh, what's on the retail shelves. So really interesting stuff. Um, so thanks again. Okay, so this next comment uh, comes uh, on my video uh, where I talked about this uh, custom G.I. Joe set that I build, which I call European Reconnaissance. And uh, the comment was made by Elite Action Joe Studios. He says that the Delta Soldier was awesome. I have a whole team of custom Black Ops figures using the Delta Soldier gear. Fantastic customs you have here. Great video. Thank you so much. And I'm very envious of the fact that you have multiples of this set. Uh, I was only able to find uh, one of the uh, the Delta Soldier um, set. And uh, you're right, the gear is incredibly awesome in this set. So um, if any of you G.I. Joe collectors are out there and find um, this particular set, uh, pick it up as soon as you see it, because uh, you won't be disappointed. And there's lots and lots of potential in terms of uh, things you can do with the various items that are included uh, with this set. Uh, I, uh, you know, took the route of turning it into an adventure team member, uh, but there's certainly many uh, military applications uh, for this as well. So, and Pat, thanks again for commenting. Uh, I'm loving what you're doing, um, those collaborations that you do with your son on your channel. Um, you know, uh, fantastic content and um, keep it going, man. And thanks again for commenting. All right, so this next comment uh, is about my How to Draw Boba Fett video. And uh, Essia Shelley, I'm, I apologize if I mispronounced your name. She said, looks great. Wish I could draw with pencils like you do. Um, honestly, I checked out your channel and uh, you are very talented. You have a lot of painting skills, uh, particularly with gouache and so forth, um, which uh, far surpassed anything I can do with that particular medium. So, and in terms of pencils, uh, I think it's just a matter of practicing. I think I mentioned on one of your videos that um, you might want to try out the, those uh, watercolor pencils, basically because you can lay down layers of, of pencil work and then you just hit it with with a splash of water and all of a sudden the the uh, drawing turns into a painting so it's really kind of amazing the kinds of stuff you can actually produce uh, with those kinds of pencils so definitely worth giving a try and I really appreciate the fact that you checked out this video and uh, I will be doing more drawing videos on my channel uh, probably there will be a G.I. Joe video uh, coming in the future and also uh, one uh, related to Spider-Man so I have a lot of plans in terms of doing various drawing projects in the future and sort of documenting the process. And hopefully this is helpful for people who uh, have artistic skills. You know, if they want to see a, a media demonstration of various techniques, uh, these, these videos are for you. Um, so if you can learn something, you know, by watching, you know, my process of doing things, um, that's fantastic. So, and uh, once again, thank you so much for the comment. All right, so this next comment uh, is about my video where I went toy hunting at the Eastern Hills Mall. And uh, Kato's World chimed in and said, awesome hunting. 
I see a lot of cool retro toys. Motu, G.I. Joe, Ninja Turtles. Love the G.I. Joes you bought. Sweet Hall, bro. Yeah, um, I think it was a very successful trip. Um, there was honestly so much to see there. It was kind of overwhelming. Uh, one of the stores that I visited there is called Niagara Emporium. And the place is just endless. And it's incredibly disorganized in terms of where things are placed. Like all the toys aren't in one section. They're sort of spread all over the store. So you kind of have to like look at the entire store in order to see everything that's there. So, but uh, very enjoyable. I must have spent probably an hour just in that one store alone, uh, just because it is very much like a gigantic flea market. It, it's kind of funny because uh, this place has been there for a while and um, I only uh, found out about it just because uh, several of my friends had sort of recommended it to me because uh, they told me, you know, hey, you know, you're doing this YouTube channel. You should check out, you know, Niagara Emporium and Eastern Hills Mall in general because there's tons and tons of action figures out there. So definitely worth checking out. Uh, and I was very excited with, with what I picked up. Stuff that I probably wouldn't have found any other place and uh, might have spent a lot on eBay to actually get those items. And as you saw, I really didn't end up having to spend a lot. And uh, yeah, it was a very successful trip. Loving your channel, Kato's World. Um, you know, fantastic stuff. And I appreciate your commenting. And thanks again. All right, so this next comment is about my Masters of the Universe Origins Mosquito action figure review. And uh, the comment was made by that nerd. Um, he said, basically, nice review. I saw some of these, but I'm collecting way too much to start another line. Uh, subbed and liked. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing. And I understand where you're coming from in terms of not wanting to um, collect uh, too many different things. I'm sort of, you know, trying to get in the same mindset. Um, there was a time, you know, in the 1990s where I definitely was collecting way too much, you know, buying lines that, um, you know, I only slightly cared about. And so I've been become a little more focused in re recent years, uh, trying to, you know, concentrate on things like G.I. Joe. But um, in terms of the Origins line, um, just because I, I don't have any Masters of the Universe stuff, uh, original vintage stuff in my collection, and this Origins line is sort of an upgrade of those, the scale is the same, but they have more articulation. And I just think it's an incre incredibly successful um, and well-executed line of toys. So I figured I'd pick up, you know, uh, what I can from this line. And I've been buying, uh, I bought one of the vehicles recently. And, uh, you know, it's it's very interesting to sort of, you know, look at this stuff. And, um, you know, it, it has that nostalgic element to it, but also um, it's pretty cool. You know, something fresh in my collection. So uh, thank you so much for subscribing. And uh, I'm glad you checked out the video. Thanks again. All right, so this last comment is about my Spawn Necromancer action figure review. And uh, G.I. Joe The Lost Chronicles says, Love the McFarland toys. Very cool. I used one of these in one of my photo stories, Terror Down Under. I don't know the name of it. Can't find it anyway. Maybe you could tell me what it is. Um, I, I actually did go ahead and comment on your video uh, and uh, let you know what I what I think that figure is. And um, and I love all the videos that you're doing on your channel, these sort of uh, photo stories and stuff like that. I think it's fantastic. And, you know, they're essentially G.I. Joe um, stories, but you've also incorporated in other um, action figures uh, from other lines, you know, when they seem appropriate to uh, include them. So uh, that's a very cool approach to uh, making those videos. And uh, keep making them. I, I'm totally eating it up as uh, as content. So, And uh, I really appreciate your commenting. And, uh, you know, keep watching the channel for uh, more McFarland stuff. Thanks again. That's pretty much all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, once again, thank you to all the people who've subscribed. Um, I couldn't have made it to 300 without all of your help. And I very much appreciate it. And once again, the links to all the channels that I mentioned who had been commenting, all those links are in the description. So if you're interested in checking out those channels, just uh, go ahead and click on the links and, uh, you know, check out their content. Until next time, I hope you're having a great day and thanks for watching.